don't know, is that Jeremy Clarkson? So, now you've got, um, now you've got uh, Nelson's, Nelson's Tower, Trafalgar Square, and you've got these weird, weird creatures on the, the building over the road, which are a cross between horses and sea serpents, sea serpents or, or fish. And this is the Admiralty, Admiralty Quarter. So obviously it's all maritime, maritime related here. But have a look at these weird, weird things up here. Fishy sort of monster things. Look at those. Very strange, sorry. Sorry mate. These strange, strange things up here. So you've got Nelson's column down that way. And we're going down here. We're going to take a right into the bunkers and the Churchill War Rooms. So this is this is known as Whitehall. So this is Whitehall. They have a lot of parades down here. Obviously, a lot of things to do with war, like people on horses with, you know. You got the. Ministry of Defence stuff, the flags flying, Ministry of Defence. This to the right is the Admiralty buildings, you know, and this place is like number one super secret. Super secret stuff. We've got the horses, the horse guard here on the right hand side, you know, poor horses made to stand here all day. Poor, poor guards made to stand here all day. What a boring job. What a boring job, but it looks good for the tourists, but God, you know. This is the uh, household cavalry. Cavalry. There you go. Very interesting, I'm sure. If you've never been here before and you want to see all that sort of stuff. I think we might be able to, to go through there. I'm not sure, let's have a look. Can we cut through? Uh, yeah, I think we can cut through. So, I'll cut through there. Police officers with guns, nice. <laughs> so, machine gun on a police officer, which I don't blame them with all the terrorist stuff that's been going on here. They've got to have machine guns now. So, yeah. Yeah. So we're cutting through. It's where they have their parades. And that's where we're heading to over there. So it's cut across this way. So they have like horse parades out here and stuff. And oh there's the bunker. That's the bunker over there. Right, see that green green leafy lane, we'll catch it more on the way out. But that's where we're going because over in the corner over there is the entrance for the Churchill bunkers and you've got a nice bit of uh, fountains down there and uh, Royal Parks and I think that's a monument for fallen soldiers and uh, the war war monument so but I when you see the, the flags flying above buildings like that you know that you're dealing with government offices and uh, obviously all of this is government offices and war offices and museums and that's the admiralty stuff there you can see they've got um, long aerials going between the two to two two things and that's maritime hf communications long wave communications and they will be uh, capable of speaking without much effort to ships all around the world so obviously they want to keep in touch with ships they don't just use satellites they have to have the old-fashioned the old-fashioned systems of HF communication as well so all good nice to see they've still got that stuff there the old ways of communicating when the satellites get taken out by EMP weapons they can revert to old-fashioned Morse code and shortwave shortwave voice communications but um, Right, let's have a look for where the 
the Churchill the Churchill bunker is. I think it's down here somewhere. Did I make a make a mistake? Let's have a quick look. Oh, we've got to be close now. Where is it? Very close. Yes, down here on the left somewhere. So wonder what this is. It's got uh, guys with guns and stopping people going in there. So I don't know what that is? Did you say this is a place trespass prohibited? So that's uh, secret war department offices. Lots of cameras, AMPR, and make sure nobody jumps over the walls and stuff like that. Because it's pretty serious shit they got going on in there. But we're going to just go into a part that the public are allowed to go into, which is the war rooms. Um, cabinet war rooms and the Churchill bunker so we might have to queue up to get a ticket well we'll see now it's just along here on the left hand side costs about 20 quid if you come in uh, on the day 18 pound if you book online and if you've got a art pass cost you about 10 pound the art pass might be a cheaper way for a lot of people to do it so let us see there's a queue oh there's a bloody queue typical Typical, typical. So, fingers crossed, we won't have to spend all day queuing. We shall see. Hmm. There's the queue. So, there we are, Churchill, war rooms. They said there's about an hour queue, is it normally to get in? All right, yeah, cheers, man. We've been looking forward to coming to this one for years. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay. Enjoy. All right. Cheers, mate. Bye. Right. Pay downstairs, is it? Yes. Okay. Right. Cheers. Hello, mate. Do you mind being on film or? You can do, yeah. Okay. It doesn't extend, does it? This, no, no, that's just for a, a light that you put on the bottom. Okay. Just about to buy our tickets now, so we're going in underground. Me, just me. There you go, to the lady over there. Okay, thanks. Does it go down much further? This is it. This is the level, is it? Right, okay. Well, we're just about to pay for our tickets now, so... We'll go in in a minute. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, mate. Uh, ticket for one adult. Thanks a lot. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Now we have to switch the audio because these devices, which are handed out, will be relaying sound which is copyrighted so I will have to speak on behalf of the device and reword things slightly so that you understand where we are and what's going on. Worked, ate and slept whilst above them bombs were falling on the streets overhead. You'll hear from some of the people who were part of the secret workforce and you might get a sense of what it was like to be here underground. Churchill became Prime Minister in May 1940. 
He visited this underground cabinet room and declared that this is the room from which I will declare or direct the war. The warren of rooms that we're about to discover were basement storerooms which were hastily fitted out before the start of the war in 1939. But in the autumn of 1940, they became in use. The period of intensive enemy bombing known as the Blitz began on November the 7th and this was an obvious target along with London. The Prime Minister was responsible for directing the war effort and he sat in his wooden chair in the centre of this room. You have to look through glass now but certainly back then there were no windows and it was closed, walled off and it would have been smoky in there. The men, and it would have been all men, were sitting around these tables and would have thrashed out all the decisions. For Churchill, the war was a, nas a national struggle. The room was last used in 1945. But if you notice the clocks on the walls are all set on two minutes to five and this is an anticipation of a meeting held in this room at the height of the bombing. Just the previous day, the previous day, the Prime Minister's residence at 10 Downing Street was badly damaged by an air raid and they moved into this cabinet war rooms and he hated, Churchill hated to be driven underground as it seemed an acknowledgement of the enemy's strength. But it showed the importance of having a headquarters where the key staff could work underground in safety. These are some of the names of the cabinet war staff. These steps you can see down to the sleeping quarters, assigned to all but the most senior staff. This low cramped space became known as the dock. And when the bombing places were in, when the bombing raids were in progress, you didn't go outside, you had to sleep in this bunker. It was smelly and smoky. One person wrote about the bedrooms in the dock, bedroom level below, that in the evenings, having slept heavily for six hours, to the roar of the air conditioning in a narrow cot covered in army blankets, one would emerge from the room and there would be all sorts of people that one would wish to avoid. But you'd also meet 
the most glamorous, haughty officers sometimes coming your way. Churchill's underground headquarters gave some protection from enemy bombing, but there was also the fear of a surprise attack. The rooms were guarded by Royal Marines. During a war cabinet meeting, an armed Royal Marine was always posted outside the door and one just inside the vestibule. Even though any German attack would have encountered Churchill himself because he would have mustered and died to protect the bunker. The staff here lived with the constant threat of danger. The Prime Minister demanded wholehearted effort and efficiency from his secretaries and everything had to be done at double time. In fact Churchill was famous for having a sticker which says action this day and if you neglected that sticker, you would do so at your peril. The door in the corner led to the officer's mess, which was run by two sergeants. Churchill's secretary noted in his diary that the food comes out of tins, but the company is sufficient. As you walk on down the corridor, you'll see a sign which says food and warmth. And there was also a sign to tell you what the weather was doing above grounds. And, and when there were air raids, the weather forecast would often change to windy, which was slang for being nervous. Above this doorway you'll see the words Prime Minister. This office is facing you was occupied by Churchill's principal private secretary, who acted as a guardian to Churchill's private lair. Churchill's private office is through the other side. This small room gives a sense of his presence always being close at hand. Notice the sign, the, the sign saying, quiet please. Churchill hated noise and he even had the typewriters silenced to make less noise. He was served by a handful of personal staff.
Inside this pokey little cupboard, amusingly disguised from the outside as the Prime Minister's private lavatory, was his top secret telephone to his allies in the States. In 43, when this telephone was installed, he could come to this room to telephone Franklin D. Roosevelt for any issues of vital importance to the Allied forces. Churchill had known all in along that Churchill would need the help of the United States to win the war, but it wasn't until the attack on Pearl Harbor that the United States became a fighting ally. On a broadcast in December 1940, Roosevelt said said of the United States that we must become the great arsenal of democracy. There was a real bond between Churchill and Roosevelt, meaning that at this time there really was a special relationship between the UK and the US. Churchill referred to Roosevelt as the greatest friend Britain has ever had. Churchill can continued his secret conversations here and they shared the Allied victory together in May 1945. This area shows the undercover areas for the private detectives that work for the Prime Minister. At the far end, you enter the Churchill Museum.
Well, it's only on the roof of Broadcasting Hub. The meeting of uh, Sunday, December, we are there prayer, and we have a morning on the day, but this is the first time the rain of nature has gone down the morning with about a quarter of an hour ago, and the rain has moved up very high in the east. I thought we might treat that they had to sign their boat. We were straight away over the city.
Days. Good day out. Good day. Good day. Queues are not too bad. Excellent. I would recommend that to anybody. Well worth the money. Well worth 20 quid I paid. If you book online £18.90, definitely worth it. And if you get yourself an art pass, which you can get on a trial for £10 for three months instead of the normal 60 quid. In that three months, if you jam in as many things as you can, then you're talking about this costs something like 10 quid to get into. So £10 for that, it's just unbelievable value. So let's do it. Yeah, I almost forgot about that place down there, which we're going to go and have a look at now. That's the uh, bunker that's still in use to this day. Let's go and check that out. Yeah, Ooh, a bit windy, a bit windy. But that that bunker there in the green, all the ivy, that is still in use today. And that bit you see on the surface is nothing underground. It's like a city apparently. There's a city underground there. And yeah, wouldn't that be nice to uh, to get into? Look at the satellite things on the top. And they've got the circular polarized um, antennas on them. The spiral antennas, but the satellite dish behind them. Now those are for communications with all different types of space satellites. And they got a few pointed that way, a few pointed that way. So, you know, and with the antennas that are up on top of the building up here, 
as I said earlier on, they've got HF antennas swinging around there. Okay, and then there's probably a lot of satellite stuff on the roof. But this is Admiralty, Admiralty stuff, yeah. Very important. So, hmm. Let's go and have a look at um, some of the bunker bits here. See what we got. There's steps leading up, but I don't think we're going to get in somehow. Might, uh, might get into a bit of trouble for walking up the steps, you never know. We shall see. The Admiralty stuff. So, there's some bunker entrances. Look, they got uh, they got uh, metal metal doors there. It's probably getting in. And what's through the metal doors? They got 360 security cameras up there. Those are quite unique. Let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look. What's in here then? What is in here? Bunkers. Bunkers goes off down to the right there. Okay. Hey. So and the same thing that side. Lots of cameras up there watching us. Cameras, cam cameras. But the lights are on, the security sensors are working. So clearly could be used as an emergency exit. Probably not the main entrance though, I would imagine. Probably not the main entrance, but here we go. Uh, and air breathing, that's just, that's just an air breather there. It's just for air in and out. Ah, and possibly having a little look as well. That's probably an emergency exit entrance there. Um, Yeah, this is the biz. If you want bunkers that are still active, Secret Underground London, you, I'm walking right next to it now. And the reason they call it the Citadel is because of this, this thing here, which are just air breathers on the top. You can see lots of cameras, but that's just, that's just for air breathing down. And security, security entrance here, probably an emergency exit. Look, there's police, look, we've got police stickers on here. Police stickers. Special security seal. To see whether anyone's actually been in and out. Listen, air. 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 So, the National Police Memorial. Yep, okay. And dedications and stuff here. But, uh, yeah. That could be an electrical substation. It could be a way in. It could be a way in, but there we go. Citadel, that's what they call it, the Citadel. That's an air breather, I would imagine, down through there. And then some of this is probably in use, but most of it is part of the underground city. So if there's another emergency exit there. Let's go and have a quick look before we go on to. Da -da 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 -da. Right, so let's have a little look. So, big metal door behind this one. Can you see? Big metal door. Down to the ground. And up to... Up to the top. So there we go. Don't think we're getting in there. Double level of security. More cameras. More cameras. I mean, why do they need cameras? Is anyone going to get in through those doors and this concrete? You've got to be fucking kidding. I mean, you've got to be <clears throat> in kidding. So... Now here's security entrances. Now. Which may or may not be in use. Let's have a look. Uh, that looks pretty insecure, you know crappy key number pad things. Ooh, look, 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 look. Look down there. A secret little secret tunnel crap there. So they don't want you in there. 
Looks like they're doing work on the building. It looks like, um, certainly around here, these first levels are all kind of, uh, you know, dirty windows, dirty windows, and one camera here, yeah, one camera there. But who knows? Possible, possible, doable. There's the citadel. Imagine getting on top of the citadel. Bloody hell, mate. Imagine doing that. There's a camera there. Camera there. There's a camera pointing upwards, away from us. There on the top, can you see it? It's pointing up and away. There's a guy down there on the right with security. But... So I don't know. There's not many cameras around this end. Wouldn't that be good getting up on the military buildings? But, uh, there you are, you've got the archway there. So this is, um... That's Buckingham Palace down there. Buckingham Palace in the distance, you can see. Gold. And the walkways up here. And then this is Nelson's Column and Trafalgar Square all around there, so yeah, good.